much again for being with us. Uh, and once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, everyone uh, around here. I know that there are people from uh, all over the world. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our great and long time leading IoT silicon partners, Nordic Semiconductors and Silicon Labs. So we have both of them here with us. This is, uh, this is great. Uh, so we've, we've asked them uh, basically to share their views on the industrial IoT market in general, and that includes smart buildings, smart cities, industrial and logistics. And of course, uh, they are the best position to explain uh, their views on the market because they're selling millions of devices uh, in this industry. Uh, and of course, uh, they will also explain where mesh systems bring clear value for, for the IoT deployments. So uh, let me introduce uh, Alf and Miko. So Alf, would you like to introduce yourself just very briefly and then the, the floor is going to be yours. Then, then, of course, Miko is going to take over. Yeah, so my name is Alf Gumre. I'm a business development manager at Nordic Semiconductor. Uh, I've uh, been around for a few years. I've actually worked with Nordic since 2002. And, uh, as a business development manager, I look into different segments. And uh, one of the segments I'm looking into in, is industrial and also then in specifically industrial Thank lighting. You. Because it's a lot Thank of you, things Alf. happening. Thank you, Miko, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Then we will move to uh, Alf's presentation. Absolutely, Yusef. So, you know, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody, depending where in the world are you. So, as uh, Yusef, uh, said I my name is Miko and I'm a senior marketing manager at Silicon Labs uh, and you know I, I work for the industrial and commercial BU and that's what I'll be talking about today and my focus areas so you know, more specifically on the industrial and commercial or commercial lighting and asset tracking solutions okay so I wouldn't do my job without uh, uh, going a little bit through Nordic Semiconductor. I don't know if you all are aware of who we are, but we are a Norwegian company. We are founded back in 1982. Uh, we are about 800 employees and R&D is in Norway, Finland, Poland and in the US. And we have sales organization all over the world. Uh, we are a public company. We are listed at the Oslo Stock Exchange under the ticker node. So if you want to, to buy some shares, you can do that. Uh, we are a fabulous semiconductor companies and our key partners are TSMC, Amcor and ASC. Uh, we are specializing in short range, ultra low power SOCs. And on those, you can uh, run uh, Bluetooth LE or uh, 805.15.4, uh, like uh, Sigby or uh, Thread stacks or Ant or even proprietary stacks. So we have the hardware, we have software tools, we have developer tools and end-to-end -end support. We are in a quite good position these days. We have approximately 45% market share in the Bluetooth Low Energy. And last year we shipped about 87,000 development kits. So that's kind of an indicator on, on that we are on uh, still growing. Uh, we also introduced low power cellular IoT SIP, which are covering LTEM and BIoT and GPS. And on the module side, we are relying on uh, third party modules. So we are not making any modules ourselves. So uh, I'm supposed to talk a little bit about industrial IoT. Um, so what's that? Well, it's uh, basically a marketing term. It used to be M2M. It's uh, in it's a way of machines to talk to each other, uh, generate and exchange data, and then uh, if necessary, act on it. So uh, as an example, I just want to look at uh, the kind of the cycle and look at the factory. And the role of the factory is to produce and fulfill orders. And uh, you reduce, reduce time for order fulfillment. And of course, you want to do that at the highest quality, lowest cost and shortest time. And you also want to be flexible and have traceability in this process. So uh, in order to do so, you need to have total control in, to be able to optimize. You need to see what's going on. 
to optimize. And for this, you need data. You need data to know the state of your industrial equipment. Can it work faster? Can it work smarter? Process optimization. And of course, you want as little uh, downtown as down time as possible. So you want to optimize the uptime and you want to have a good overview and to have predictive maintenance. And you also want to schedule your maintenance. You don't want your machine to stop during the working day. You want to have the total view of your stock. Is it too big? Is it too small? Traceability in case of failure. And you also want to know everything about your finished goods, the quality of it. Uh, you want to know the logistics. Uh, you want know, to know the results of your final test and you want traceability of all this. So um, who needed the data and for what? Uh, data is needed at various levels, at the worker's line of call level, supervisor level, uh, to provide the data to those who need it and to make decisions. Data available to workers usually improves the productivity. So if they know what's going on, they're getting motivated. Any data set that is generated by an IoT project should also be identified the consumer of the data. The consumer of the data should be able to use the data to make decisions. Uh, and all of which need maintain, maintaining. Uh, for example, the deployment, industrial IT enables improvements in decisions around manufacturing process based on availability of more accurate data. It can also be used to improve pro production quality and uptime. At the data, as the data is generated from the device and sensors on the network enables read time and predictive maintenance across the state. So uh, transparency. The main idea behind industrial IT is that of making machines smarter and more efficient than humans are making decisions. This uh, does rely on Great uh, consistency and uh, communication data. Companies within the market are now developing leading edge sensors which make highly accurate measurements. This data can be coupled with real time analytics and can explain how all machines and people are performing. So, this is then how it's going to be in, starting to be interesting. Then, it's how to collect data. Uh, for fixed equipment, Robots and all fixed equipment have Ethernet ports. And we also have a lot of building automation and control system called BAX standards. And it's ongoing work on uh, international organization for standardization to get it standardized. It's a big variety of standards out there and uh, they are not typically working very good together. So we are these days we are seeing an increased interest from industrial sector on going wireless. For moving uh, equipment and people, uh, it's obviously wireless, which is the 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 main thing out there today. And uh, using wireless to do asset tracking, to do indoor positioning, and to monitor space and occupancy. So uh, how do we collect data then? Uh, we are seeing a marketing trend on uh, professional lighting system using for collecting data. And uh, the lighting industry is getting wireless these days. For obvious reasons that have been discussed many, many times today. Seeing that the, light, the typical lighting company is not going to lighting shows anymore. They are showing up at building automation shows. So, uh, and the wireless, uh, the, the lighting companies, they will need a wireless mix technology to, uh, to cope with all this information. So, uh, added features, use cases within the uh, light control. Uh, when you add uh, wireless into the light control, you can get beaconing, you can get indoor positioning, asset tracking, you can get the occupancy, 
you can see movement directions, you can get the temperature, and we're also seeing that uh, the light systems are used for sensor data like heat ventilation and air conditions. So uh, it used to be 100% uh, luminance and to control on and off and level. And with wireless, you get all these other, uh, other use cases that it can be used for. So then you can get a total overview of what's going on in the building. And uh, you can actually take this a uh, few steps further. A friend of mine in the lighting industry, he said that lighting is like a Trojan horse. The data generated by the light system will be more valuable than, valuable than the light itself in the future. So he actually said that in the future, we may be give away the light for free at if we can own the data generated by it. And we're also seeing trends in lighting industry that we are seeing that light as a service is coming on. And that means that the building owner is not actually owning the light system it's itself, but uh, it's another company that installs the light and then take the data generated for it and then uh, sell that to the users uh, in the building. So you, for, for instance, you can uh, sell the, the data generated by the, by the lighting system, for instance, to a security company, because you can see if something is moving that's not supposed to move, you can then sell that information to the security company. Uh, if someone is in uh, a restricted area, which is not supposed to be there, you can also sell data about uh, what toilets is being used to the cleaning company. Let's say that this toilet has not been used, you don't need to wash that. And other toilets which are or, or other rooms that are used more frequently need more uh, cleaning. Uh, we also have like the, the space and occupancy. If the meeting room is available, uh, if it's too many people there, uh do i have too much space should i rent up some of my space also have can use this uh, data for uh, hate track systems to say that it's 20 people in a meeting room maybe it's uh, smart to turn off the heating instead of he or to turn off the heating now instead of starting the ac in 20 minutes and do things like that and then we have some market trains in uh, logistics uh, it's definitely getting wireless. Uh, people want to know where the stuff are, uh, the asset tracking. For To do this, you need a wireless mesh, you need GPS, and then you need, of course, to translate this via a cellular or a satellite to and get it to the cloud. And you really need to know where the things are and uh, how it performs uh, and how it's handled. Uh, we had a lot of problems in Norway. We are selling a lot of salmon and uh, the salmon came to the continent and it was not eatable. So it turned out that uh, the driver of the truck had turned off the cooling system uh, to save some diesel on his way down to Europe. And all those things you can track now and you can monitor it. And also if it uh, has been uh, dropped, in, uh, dropped and uh, it's damaged and of course for theft. So, uh, and for all this, you need a re reliable mesh system to 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 control the data and to send the data. Alpha, I'm 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 really sorry. I need to interrupt this. This is a super interesting presentation, and thank you uh, very much for uh, for sharing your views. Uh, I I will leave the the floor to Miko because, as you know, we have a, a fairly uh, fairly timed uh, section here. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, if you okay. have any questions to Alf, please direct them to either uh, Alf Orm or uh, myself, and we will definitely get them uh, answered. Miko, the floor is yours. Big question, Yusef. Uh, are you able to see my screen and the presentation? Yes, we can. All right, excellent. So, you know, I already introduced myself, so, uh, you know, time's short today. Let's get to it. Uh, you know, I, I only got about 15 minutes uh, and it's impossible to go through all the information we have in 15 minutes. You know, if you want to connect with Silicon Labs, uh, you know, feel free to do so. We are, we are, you know, over here. I got a bunch of my colleagues over here. We can do one-on-one -on -one sessions. 
And if you want more in-depth material, you know, don't uh, don't be afraid to reach out to us, uh, you know, using the deal room, uh, you know, let's say uh, connection tools. All right. So quickly about Silicon Labs. Um, you know, we're a, a fabulous semiconductor company, just like uh, you know Nudic Semiconductor. We're uh, headquartered in Austin, Texas, but we have offices, you know, all around the world. And how we like to see is we are kind of you know the powerhouse or the one-stop shop for most of your connecti uh, connectivity protocol needs. And if, if you look at uh, you know some of these logos over here, you can see. You know, we cover a lot of a lot of wireless technologies and, and connectivity needs. You know, we've uh, we've shipped more than three billion products, but we do have other product lines, but wireless. But you know, out of those uh, more than three billion product shipments, more than a billion is is IoT connectivity. You know, for all all those protocols. So you know, we lead the market uh, with many of these protocols, like you know, sub gigahertz wireless, you know, Zigbee, C Wave, uh, Thread. We work uh, a lot with, uh, you know, tier one companies in the industry, but a uh, good thing to understand, you know, we have a large customer base, so we can scale our support and products and what we provide from, you know, tier one companies to, um, you know, you know, medium sized to small, uh, small companies. So, you know, we, we work with a lot of people in the industry. So as I said, I, I work for the industrial and commercial IoT BU, which is one of the BUs at Silicon Labs. And you know how we kind of built our industrial and commercial BU is we have three sub segments we look after. And you know if I start from the left, we have the smart cities uh, sub segment. Uh, you know a lot of of uh, what we do in smart cities is you know, wireless meter reading, whether it's electricity, whether it's, uh, you know, heat or whether it's gas. Um, so, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, sub gigahertz connectivity goes over there because as you can imagine, uh, you know, when you, when you talk about outdoors connectivity, people want, uh, you know, uh, the best possible range and also a huge number of devices as if you imagine a, a cap, you know, capital area with, smart electricity meters, the number of devices is extremely large. Now, moving to the middle, to, to industrial and building automation, that's one of the key segments for us. Uh, you know, what do, what do we do in that space? Uh, you know, uh, HVAC is, is one of the key focus areas for us. Uh, you know, reducing the energy bill, energy consumption is one of the key things the building owners are looking at. And, you know, it's, it's a way to make the you know, world greener as well. So, you know, wireless, uh, wireless HVAC, uh, you know, access control, you know, security sensors, uh, you know, those are the types of application uh, we look at in the building automation. And in the industrial application is, for example, you know, tools, tools tracking, asset tracking, uh, all those things. Uh, the third segment where I, I'm, I uh, personally focus on is, is retail and commercial and you know some of the key applications we look after in in the retail and commercial space is, is commercial lighting, for example. As Alf mentioned, there is a trend, uh, you know, for lighting to go wireless. Uh, you know, they, you save uh, a lot of you know cable pooling and you know drywall patching by adding wireless uh, to the lighting, so you can actually make it uh, you know cheaper to install and 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 easier to deploy uh, you know because you just need uh, less labor but you know ultimately we're looking at you know bringing those value added services like you know asset tracking you know occupancy sensing occupant, occupancy data collection predictive maintenance in, into wireless lighting under the retail and commercial segment we also look after indoor asset tracking and in, in indoor positioning which uh, we think is is going to be a massive growth area and a challenge for this industry as there's not really a standard you know protocols and uh, you know there's, there's not a mainstream solution for indoors available today unlike there is for outdoors which we know as gps so that's kind of you know our industrial and commercial iot in a nutshell you know, and when, when we talk to our customers, you know, we see this this industry may, faces, you know, both massive challenges, but also massive opportunities. You know, and if, if you look at the smart energy space and, you know, a lot of you probably know that, you know, back in the day, you know, somebody came, walked to your house and, you know, looked at your energy bill, you know, read, manually read the meter once a year or twice a year you know, hugely kind of cost uh, or, or labor intensive work. 
and uh, you know now everything's going to wireless so you know they you know the, the utility companies can measure your energy consumption on a daily basis sometimes multiple times a day and you know they can even adjust pricing dynamically so but of course you you probably understand that rolling out you know the technology into millions of households you know it's 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 a lot of work you know these devices need to operate 20 years out there in the field so you know there there's massive opportunities in efficiency and improvements but you know the deployments are are not easy another trend we see and then you know again it's a challenge and opportunity is just reducing the energy bill and and energy consumption and this is especially true you know for buildings and um, you know there's great opportunities over there with with hvac and commercial lighting you know to put in the smarts in the, these devices by you know sensing how many people there are in the room how much daylight comes into the room and basically adjusting the light levels or whether devices are on and off, you know, depending if, if there's occupancy. And that's, uh, you know, that's where a lot of this, you know, wireless technology and, you know, smart devices come into play in this sector. The third example, uh, you know, it's just the productivity boost. Uh, you know, when, when I, I think we see a lot of this when it comes to indoor positioning and asset tracking. And, and, you know, it's as simple as helping people to find stuff faster. You know, there's some, some of our customers tell, you know, we, we spent hours finding the forklifts in a warehouse, you know, because those places are large and it might have been your colleague who parked it elsewhere. And if you can simply go and solve those challenges with, uh, you know, connectivity and wireless technology and, you know, reduce, you know, finding forklifts or power tools or, or pallets from the warehouse, it can be a significant boost in productivity and, and a reduction in, in labor cost. And one more, one more example is, uh, you know, we uh, Alf also spoke about commercial lighting, and I, I mentioned uh, we see a trend as well of lighting going wireless for multiple reasons, you know, to reduce the, the number of cables you, you need to have. And, you know, you can even have battery powered controls and, and sensors, so they don't need to be mains powered. And, um, you know, uh, there is this vision of, uh, you know, lighting being a, a platform in the buildings. You know, if, if you go to your office and you look up, you probably see, you know, half a dozen or, or, or if not a dozen lights over there. So there's a lot of infrastructure over there, which is, uh, you know, mains powered. And, you know, you can use that as an infrastructure to collect IoT data and, you know, provide additional value, you know, instead of just providing light. You know, as, as we are a, a silicon provider and we, we actually like to see ourselves as an enabler for some of these smart applications and, you know, we focus on, on building silicon, you know, I just wanted to bring a couple of highlights what, what we are able to do at, as silic, at Silicon Labs to enable, you know, this market to go forward. And a lot of these applications and examples, you know, whether it's smart metering, commercial lighting, building auto automation, require mesh networking technology because, you know, we, we need to cover large areas. We need to cover hundreds, if not thousands of devices in a network, and, and you need mesh for that. And, uh, you know, what our kind of go-to go -to weapon for addressing mains uh, powered mesh networking devices is a product called, you know, XG21. And why this is uh, our go-to device for mesh networking, you know, it's 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 linked budget. We, you know, people, if you look at the, think about a street lighting application, you need as much range as possible. And this device does it. So, you know, we go up to 20 dBm transmit power. We have great sensitivity. You know, you can get a massive range with this device. This is this is optimized for mains powered applications because a lot of mesh. You know, it's it's always on 100% duty cycle. It is relatively low power, but this is not our optimized device for coin cell uh, powered devices. And then when it comes to the kind of uh, the go-to protocols, you know, we or partners like Wirepass, we provide the connectivity stacks. As we see, our customers don't really want to, you know, put their efforts in the developing these protocol stacks. They expect us to provide them so they can actually focus on, you know, how do we add that smart functionality like occupancy sensing or, you know, uh, you know, daylight harvesting or indoor positioning asset tracking applications. And they just want these, you know, protocols as tools that they can, they can use and leverage. 
One thing I'd like to mention is we do see regulation and trends in the market that security is becoming more and more important. Even there even starts to be regulation in some markets demanding, you know, more and more security features uh, for these devices. And, you know, that's something we've been kind of talking about for years. And, you know, to prove we are putting uh, efforts into making IoT secure, you know, this is our most secure device today, you know, and besides the basic kind of crypto features, we've started to add advanced functionality like tamper detection, you know, secure key management, secure key storage, you know, differential power analysis, counter message into these devices, because especially in the industrial and commercial market, you know, these devices need to be secure and, you know, you don't want anybody hacking into your commercial lighting or your smart meters and, and start uh, changing the data. So this is kind of one of the devices in our portfolio. Um, and this is kind of really targeted for those mains powered mesh applications. All right, and let's uh, let's move to our next device, which is the XT22. And I like the XT21. The XT22 is optimized for battery powered applications such as uh, you know, asset tags, uh, beacons, or battery powered mesh devices. And, uh, you know, you, you see some of the differences to the XT21 on this slide. Uh, you know, uh, two, two major differences being is we've a little bit limited the transmit power on, on, the, on this device. Uh, and the purpose of that is, of course, to, to reduce the power consumption. Um, and, you know, the major difference, what you see on this slide, uh, you know, is that this device is ultra low power when it comes to, you know, transmissions, uh, you know, we are sub 4 milliamps uh, transmitting and sub uh, 3 milliamps uh, while receiving. And then there are various low power modes for different use cases, uh, you know, that can bring, uh, you know, the current consumption of this device to do way less than a microamp. So this is really something, uh, you know, if, if your application requires, uh, you know, battery powder operation and, and years of lifetime, this is our go-to device for those those applications. What else is, is worth mentioning for this device? Uh, well, you can see there's a few different package options available depending how much GPIO or how small of a package you need. And on the right-hand side, maybe a few key things to highlight. Uh, you know, that's uh, first of all, this just like the XG21, this runs on a, on a Cortex M33 uh, uh, and, the, and the same performance. However, as you see, uh, uh, you know, the memory memory amounts are a little bit less than, uh, than on, the, on the 21 because typically the battery powered applications run simpler applications. Uh, so you don't need as much RAM or as much flash as on those mains powered routing devices. So that's uh, that's good to keep in mind, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you look at your application, uh, you know, or memory requirements. Another thing uh, to highlight, uh, if you look at the peripheral side, there's a couple of unique peripherals on the 22. Uh, there is a building temperature sensor, you know, not hugely accurate, but if if coarse temperature monitoring is suitable for your application, uh, you can replace an external sensor with the internal one. And another other thing we have on this device is we have the built-in uh, sleep crystal uh, on the 22. So, uh, you know, for certain applications, there's no need to use an external 32 kilohertz crystal and, and save a little bit on, on bill of materials. Now on the security side, uh, uh, you know, we don't have all the same features as on the 21, uh, as, uh, you know, this is dis uh, designed for high volume applications where, you know, cost is, is extremely uh, important, but we still do have all the standard security features like, um, you know, hardware accelerated uh, uh, crypto, you know, things like AES and ECC, true random number generator. But we, we actually decided to keep the secure boot capabilities uh, to ensure the authenticity of the software that runs on the 22 and make sure, you know, there's no malware that could run on, on the 22. So that's why we have the secure boot with root of trust and secure loader. We also do have the secure debug unlock uh, and lock features. So, you know, for RMA uh, cases, uh, 
And you can, if you so decide, you can unlock the, the debug port on the device without fully erasing the flash. And then you can still go and debug the software that runs on the 22. So those are kind of the key highlights of, of this device. Uh, and let's move on to the next slide. And this uh, on a high level talks about, you know, which protocols are supported by, by the 21. Uh, and the 22 device, and I also decided to include one of our Series 1 devices called MG12 in this uh, slide, uh, you know, as we do have other products uh, in, the, in the portfolio as well. And, you know, so if, if we first talk about the WirePass support on these devices, uh, and, and starting from the right, uh, you know, if you want to get started with WirePass development today, uh, the software is fully available uh, on, on MG12. Uh, uh, so that enables uh, development today. And if you look at the WidePass availability on the 21 and 22, you know, WidePass is working on it and, and a beta uh, software or beta version uh, for the WidePass Mess uh, 5.x uh, is will be available in October of this year. And then a general availability, you know, production capability software, first quarter of 21 for these uh, two new devices we have in our portfolio. Uh, and then, uh, you know, below that, you can see all the other protocols that these devices support, uh, you know, ranging from, uh, you know, Bluetooth direction finding for uh, asset tracking or indoor positioning. And then we have, you know, standard protocols like Bluetooth Mass, uh, Zigbee, OpenTrad, or Bluetooth Low Energy and, you know, Zigbee or OpenTrad multi-protocol uh, combinations as well. And this table uh, summarizes, you know, what features and functionality are available now or in the future. So I know this is just a pretty high level overview of, of the software, what's, what's available. But, uh, you know, if you need more details, don't hesitate to contact WirePass when it comes to the WirePass software or Silicon Labs when it comes to the Silicon Labs software. And that really wraps up my presentation. I've, uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, it, it contains some useful information, uh, you know, that helps you to, to bring, you know, develop, uh, you know, IoT products and, uh, you know, better applications to the field. And with that, uh, I thank you all, all very much and wish you a pleasant day.